Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I started this channel to share my love of salmon flies and fly tying. I cover everything from spay flies to salmon flies to uh, artistic flies. I cover techniques. All my flies are step by step so that way you can follow along. I try to give as much detail and specifics as I can throughout the whole process. That way it's much easier to understand but you can also um, try out certain techniques and see certain things that I do. Um, if there's anything that you ever need to know um, or you have a specific question, by all means, shoot me a message. I'd be happy to make a video about it. Um, Mondays, I'll be doing material reviews, everything from all the different pheasants that we use to different hooks, uh, different threads and silks, tinsels, and uh, more things that are used in salmon flies. So, if you guys enjoy the channel and you like a specific video, by all means, please uh, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, think about subscribing. That helps out the channel, that helps me out. And leave your notification bell on. That'll let you know when I post a new video and you'll be able to follow along um, before anybody else. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get on with it. All right, so here we are over at the table, and uh, I've laid out some crests here. This is going to be our main topic of discussion tonight, um, or today, depending on where you are. So when I get my um, golden pheasant heads, and I'm sure many of you have gotten them before, they come very much like this. Uh, some are fanned out more, some are a little bit more together like this. That's fine. Uh, but what I'd like to do when I get them is separate the tippets from the crest. So what I'll do is just fold up underneath here and the more tippets you can get off the better. The crests that are that do come off, these little fine ones, um, I typically just leave those. So now if you can't get the separation that you want. You can always use a pair of scissors and cut them. Um, I also like to remove the beaks. Just a preference. You don't have to. It's just something I do. Uh, I'm not going to actually take these apart. Um, these are going to go back in the bag as they are brand new. Um, but that's how I separate them out. So once you've got them separate, once you've got them separate, um, a lot of times you'll see that they come, they'll be a little bit squiggly, be a little squirrely, kind of like this. And some of these can be worked with. Some of these you can, you can pull off and they will be straight. But there are some that are going to be curved, some that are going to give you some trouble. And those ones, they're a little bit of a pain in the butt, especially when you're trying to set, get them on top of a wing. So what you can do is you can soak these. Um, I, I soak them overnight. Um, warm soapy water. I usually use Dawn dish soap and a little bit of downy fabric softener. That'll kind of soften them up a little bit and make them a little bit more pliable, easier to work with. So after you've soaked them overnight, take them out of the water and lay them over a rolled up towel so the towel creates almost a tube. And then just lay them over the towel like this, very gently with the fibers spreading out and let them dry that way. Once they're completely dry, they should be nice and straight like that. Now some of these down here, uh, some of these smaller ones, they, they might be a little bit squiggly, they might be a little squirrely. But uh, you can take those and soak them in some water and you can shape them, uh, you can shape them that way. So when you're working with your tails or really small flies, that's a good method that you can use and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, but now when it comes to like selection, these obviously are going to be for most of your larger flies, um, larger toppings, but uh, as part of like the exhibition style, the newer style of tying, um, a lot of married wings, uh, what you can do with these is you can get nice tails out of these. I don't usually do it a whole lot, I do do it sometimes, but not a whole lot. So what you can do is get one that you like the shape of, and let's see if I get a hook here. 
I'll just use this hook for the sake of argument. It's just one sitting on my desk. Now, if you look at the fiber length on this feather, it's rather long. So putting it up on this hook, this hook is a little bit small for this feather. So I would find one that's a feather that's a little bit smaller and has slightly shorter fibers. So this one here, as you can see, is curled rather badly. So what we're going to do with this one is we'll just take this and use our bodkin or needle and run it along the underside of the spine. And now if you see it starting to curve to one side, put your needle on the opposite side. And then just pull back like you would on a ribbon. So it's curving to the left for me a little bit. I'm going to go on to the right. And then kind of straightened it out a bit. And it opened it up. As you can see, it's being nice and open now. Now you can take that, line that up on your hook, find your tie-in point, and from that point, strip away all those fibers below it. And now you've got your tail, which is a bit more open, a little bit better, a little bit fuller and give you that nice uh, reverse cascade to go up and meet with the topping. I probably shortened that just a little bit more, but A little bit more work and that'll be a great tail for that. But on the other hand, what I do like to do is I like to use a tail that's fitting to the hook. One that's actually the right size for it. And that takes a little bit of practice to get used to finding. Um, what I like to do is find one that's a little bit smaller. See this one here? If you can tie in, if you can get your tippet, or excuse me, if you can get your crest, and you can tie in anywhere in this lighter area down here at the base of the feather, where it's right here, it starts, it's white and it starts to turn yellow. If you can make anywhere in here your tie-in point, you're going to be doing good. You'll have a much better looking fly, you'll have a much better looking tail. And this one here, it's a little bit big for this hook, but um, I'd probably put this one on a hook maybe a size or two up, maybe a 4.0. And that'll still be a really nice, beautiful topping for a tail. Okay, so with longer toppings, if you've got ones that are kind of squiggled like this and they're kind of S-shaped and a little funky, they're a little bit harder to rework to get back to a very straight um, feather like this one. So what you can do is you soak them in hot water Individually, not the whole crest. Uh, soak them in the hot water and then use an ordinary glass. Take your topping and lay it right across the glass. And you want to make sure that it is straight. This is a little bit curved. Make sure it's straight because however it dries, that's how it's going to stay. Just make sure the tips are good. Make sure the base is good. Now what you'll do is let that completely dry and just set the glass down. When it's dry, it'll just fall off the glass. Once it falls off the glass, it'll be nice and dry. Then you can take it and it'll still have a, a bit of a curvature this way to it, but it'll be straight. So then then you can take it and you can run your bodkin right along the spine, open it up a little bit, straighten it out, and uh, you can work with it that way. Another thing that you can do 
you play with your two, play with these a little bit more. Um, you know, take some out, kind of get to know your materials. Right, this one is not a great one, so I'll use this as an example. Uh, when you're trying to work up to get to your tie-in point, say you find your tie-in point is here. I'll use a pair of tweezers, hold it right at the tie-in point, and use my finger to fold it. And now you can see I've got that little kink. That's going to be my tie-in point. Once I know where my tie-in my tie-in point is, I'll use a pair of pliers. I'll strip away all this fuzz here. And if you see right here, after you fold it, there'll be a few little fibers that'll stick out. You'll take those and just strip them off. Those are going to get in your way. Then you want to take your, your flat nose pliers, make sure you have it completely flat in your pliers, and just give it a gentle little squeeze. You don't have to squeeze much. If you squeeze too much, you'll wind up flattening it too much and weakening it, and then you'll wind up, it'll wind up breaking. And you don't want to do that. So, we will just flatten that down a little bit. And flattening it will basically make it so it's much easier to tie it onto the hook shank. Now this topping is not quite curved or not quite flat enough. It's curved a little bit too much. So I'll just run my bodkin over it. And like I said, just play with these a little bit and you'll figure out exactly the pressure that you have to put on them. Um, and then you can get your desired curvature. I'm terribly sorry about the lighting. I'm still without that one lamp. So, uh, you know, again, I have to make do with what I've got. But uh, hopefully you guys are able to see this. And there's another one that I think is really good and ready for uh, the fly. Now, the other part. Now we've seen how to shape it on a glass and how to shape it with a needle. Let's find one that is really bad. Have very many bad ones. I've thrown them all away. You'll find that when you go through your toppings and your crests, you're going to find that there's a lot more bad toppings that you just can't use. Um, if you buy really good quality ones, John McLean at Feathers MC, he selects each one by by hand. They're all his, all his uh, his own selections. What he sends to you, he doesn't just grab a bag off the shelf. He makes sure that. Everyone is of good quality. So I highly recommend getting from him. Uh, he's not a sponsor, but he is a good friend, and he's somebody that um, I've bought materials from for years, and he has always, always, always been someone that I can rely on. Well, this one's not terrible. Um, let's say you've got one that's got a bend in it, and it's not straight enough, and you can use just your thumbnail on the back side of it. You can go right through and all I'm doing is just very gently pinching that spine. And by doing that it opens right up. I'm trying to get you guys a little bit lower, maybe that will help a bit. So this one's very straight. This one I would use for like a uh, another, you know, fly from the, the cork collection or something along those lines. It'd be a larger fly, maybe a, an older Nicholson or something like that. So anyway, um, 
you can use your thumbnail to shape them. You can shape them left, you can shape them right, you can give them curvature in any direction that you like. This one here is kind of rounded, so instead of using the needle, I'll just use my thumbnail. And again, I'm just going to pinch right along, this, along the spine, and you can see it's starting to open up a little bit more. And now you can see this one is also opened up and a bit more straight. Ready for a low, really nice wing to set on. Now, another way that you can shape them, let's say you've got a project fly that is, you know, it's something that you are very, very specific about. You want this topping to be perfect. It needs to match the fly perfectly. Well, you can do that as well. Um, take your bowl of water with your tippets in it. I used, you know, you can put them in hot water and soak them for 15 or 20 minutes. Um, and that, that's usually good enough. And then once you get them nice and soaked, usually when, uh, when they're soaked through and they're ready, they'll start to sink. If they're floating on the top, they're not quite done yet. But you want to make sure when you bring them down here, make sure they're good and wet. And you want to use a good, a good smooth surface, either glass, clean plexiglass, or um, you know, something that's not coarse. Uh, you could probably use your kitchen counter or something like that if you wanted to. Screen on your phone, I don't recommend that, but you can. Um, in this case, my, my desktop has plexiglass on it, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, let's put this in a spot that's better seen. There we go. Alright, so say, uh, you know, you've got that specific shape that you want. So you lay it out like this. Grab a little bit more water if you need to. Make sure it stays nice and wet while you're doing this. Okay. So now, start down here towards the base a little bit. Very carefully start to flatten out and Just starting to separate those fibers just enough. You can add a little bit more water if you need to. You want to just pull those fibers away from the main stem of the feather. And once they've started to kind of get, a, get this shape here, where they're just starting to separate, Use your needle, your bodkin. Again, starting down by the base. And you're going to start separating those fibers. And if the feather shifts a little bit, which, you know, it's going to, just use your tweezers, pull it back into shape. Maybe you need a little bit more water. Um, but you're just going to very slowly start to pull these fibers away and give them the shape that you want. Glass is ideal. Um, a, a nice clean, clean sheet of glass or a mirror is really ideal. Um, plexiglass, I feel like, is just a little bit too coarse, especially if it's older plexiglass like I've got. This is this works for me. I've kind of figured it out and kind of know how it should go, but um, it's still not quite as good as a sheet of glass. Now you don't have to pull out every single fiber and separate every single fiber. Once you've got the shape that you want and the majority of these longer fibers here are spread out, let it dry. Make sure that you also shape this end. However the shape of the wing is going to be, you want to make sure that you've got this this end dropped a little bit, otherwise it would give you a little bit of trouble um, when you go to set it.
get you a little closer, take a better look at it. So now you can see it's, it's nice and spread out down through here. It's got the really nice curvature and this will get you over that hump right by the head. And that to me is really the best way to be able to shape a exhibition style um, topping. You can do it for your fishing flies as well. Um, you know, it will make them look nicer at first for presentation and a photograph and stuff before you take them to the river. But um, mostly for the exhibition style, married wing type things, uh, this is probably the best way to get the uh, topping looking about as perfect as you can. Um, you can do the same thing with tails. If you've got some feathers that are a little short, they weren't cooperating quite right. You want to create a tail. These are just a slight bit harder just because of how small they are. And the racket, rackets right here by the base wants to, <clears throat> always wants to twist on you. If you stay with the fibers, you'll be okay. And you take these and just do the same thing. Patiently just spread them out. And you can shape them however you like. However you want this tail to look, that's the whole beauty and the purpose of it. Now if you shape these on the glass, as you can see now, that one's pretty well shaped. It's a little bit opened up. That should give you a nice, a nice look once you put it onto the hook. But now, you can also take it and wrap it onto the glass. Make sure it's straight. And then once that dries, again, it'll just fall off the glass. Then you can take that, use your needle and open it up if you like, or you can take it just like it is and tie it right onto the hook. All right, so now we've taken a look at toppings themselves, where they come from on the feather. I'm just gonna take this one back. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Where they come from on the crest. So these longer ones are your toppings. Down in here is going to be your tails. And then for your smaller flies, um, probably your one aught, two aught, or excuse me, your one aught, down to like a two or a four, or if you want to get down to a six even, those are all going to come right in through here as well. And then you, once you start getting up into here, these are going to be your toppings for much larger flies. These ones down here, these would be great either tails or toppings for the smallers, smaller flies. So now that we've seen the toppings, uh, let's go over to the vise and uh, let's apply them. I'll show you how to uh, put on some tails, under, use these as underwings, uh, and also uh, as toppings and multiple toppings. So, um, yeah, let's head over to the vise and uh, we'll show you how it goes. Okay, now we're over at the vise and I've picked out a tail that I want to uh, mount for this fly. It's going to be a silver doctor, but I'm going to make it a um, kind of a lower wing, mixed wing style. And you can see this one here is nice and straight and where I want to mount it is going to be right at the base of that white right there. And that should give this some really nice proportions. So what we'll do is just strip away all these little short fibers here. And 
Once you've stripped those away, have another look. See how it's going to mount. Position-wise, well, let's see. The wing will probably come out to about here. I'm going to shorten it just a little bit more. Now there's one thing that I've seen uh, some other tires do that I'll do here is cut away some of these fibers. Instead of stripping them, I'll cut them away, and if you look very closely, you'll see that that leaves a couple little pieces sticking up, and what that does is that gives your thread a little bit of something to bite into, and that can also help it so it doesn't roll so much on the hook shank. Just have a look. All right. I think I kind of like that. Now, the other thing that you can do to help it from rolling, if you have a, a problem with it tipping one way or another, you can use your flat nose pliers. And you can flatten the rackets. Uh, if you don't have flat nose pliers, uh, you can always use a pair of tweezers, but I really recommend the flat nose pliers. And if you see, these have no grooves on the inside. And that's what you want. So what you do is right where the tie-in point is, give it a little bit of a squeeze. And you want to be a little bit gentle with it. You don't want to be too rough because when you flatten those, we'll, uh, if you squeeze too hard, it'll cut right through that, that stem. There we go. Now the body on this fly is actually going to be uh, silver tinsel, flat silver tinsel. So we don't want to have anything that's going to create lumps and bumps as that will throw the tinsel off and it will show. So for this one, we'll wrap up to, a, I don't know, maybe a millimeter or so, maybe, maybe two millimeters. And then we're going to trim the rest away. You want to have basically just enough wrapped that your ostrich hurl will cover it. After that, you don't need anything else. That'll just create a little bit of a little rise in the uh, body of the fly. So that's how you do that. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Once you've got the tail on, you can do veilings as well. Now when you're doing veilings, they come in several different forms. There's different ways to do them. This particular pattern is a silver doctor. And that calls for blue chatterer or cotinga as a veiling. So instead of Kutinga, you can also use a uh, Kingfisher feather, preferably from the rump. 
I'm going to go ahead and pick one out, and we can discuss that a little bit later uh, in another episode when I will do uh, some of the um, more exotic birds, which would be like Kotenga and their substitute, Indian Crow. And their... All right, now when you're setting a wing, or excuse me, a topping over your wing, it's important to make sure that you're able to tie in that topping. So I've got a wing set up here. And what we do is just cut off this part of the head right here. Just cut off those extra fibers from the wing. And this is one I'm tying for the water. So <clears throat> I'll get the, uh, the topping all set and I'll finish up the fly later. But I want you guys to be able to see how to actually set the topping. So I've got a topping here that I've chosen. Seems to actually fit the wing pretty, pretty good. And now you'll see right here, it kind of comes up and over the wing, but over here it seems to want to come straight a little bit. So here you want to put a little bit of a bend in the rachis. So I use my thumbnail and start bending that down a bit. And you'll see the tie-in point is going to be right about here. So right where the tie-in point is, grab it by your tweezers and then just give it a little bit of a bend with your finger. Remove this little one from this little fuzz from underneath. Helps to make sure that that bend is good and solid and that you've got a nice kink there. All right, so it's popping up a little bit like that, not a big deal. Go right up into right up into this lighter part here, where the whiter part of the feather is, and create your kink. Just using your thumbnail, and that should bring that down just enough. That should come right down over the top. And the process is pretty much the same for a mixed wing. Just make sure that your topping matches the shape of the wing. And Take your time and make your adjustments accordingly. And you can get your topping to fit right on. And that right there to me, that's a good good looking topping. It creates a nice shape. Goes right along the wing. Kind of meets up with the tail. That, that doesn't really matter. You can make it so that way they're separated. And so the tail sits lower. Topping sits a little higher with the wing. They don't have to touch. That's more of a modern thing. Um, and, uh, you know, if it's a fishing fly, the water's going to really... Um, that's going to make the topping and the wing look a little bit different anyway. So whether it actually meets the tail or not, that's completely up to you on what you prefer. But as far as making the shape of the topping to fit the wing, it's all about just little adjustments and little kinks along the rachis as you go. And as you can see there... We've got it on there nice. 
And that's how you set your tail, that's how you set your topping. Um, the multiple topping wing is a little bit more difficult. Um, that one requires quite a few more toppings. I'm going to just take that apart. I'm going to set that wing aside and I can reset that later. Now when you're working with multiple toppings like I said, you want to start off a little bit smaller use flat nose pliers to pinch the rackets at the tie-in point use your needle like I showed before and that'll kind of start to smooth things out a bit. The tie-in point is going to be right about here. I'll take that and I'll kink that with my finger, like so. Peel away the fuzz around that. Pinch the rack as flat with the pliers. That would be one. And now we'll repeat the process getting larger and larger, or longer and longer, I should say. I'm going to just repeat that process several times.
Now, the more you can get them to be cascaded like this, the better off the fly is going to look. Some will always want to fight you a little bit and not be so easy. And then others will want to just go right on. It's all about just practicing with them and you'll get it down. And here we are with three. And I could keep going with more and more, but um, this fly is going to be using a married wing and not this um, crest wing. But this gives you an idea of how you go about layering them one after the other. Um, lay them one on top of the other, try not to go side by side. And I heard someone actually mention once uh, trying to tie them all together at once and then put them on. I'm sure that it could be done, but I really think that this is the better way to do it, one at a time. At least that I've found. So little by little, you just stack them one on top of the other, making sure they all take the same shape, and that the one on top is a little bit longer than the previous. Uh, other than that, that's uh, about how it goes. That's pretty much the gist of it. So, um... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this one was a little bit more challenging for me to make. It was a bit more fun. Um, and, uh, you know, if you guys have any more questions, uh, you want another demonstration of some kind, by all means, please, just leave it in the comments. Let me know. I do read all the comments. I may not answer all of them right away, but I do try to get to every one. Um, with all that being said, I hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful evening or day, wherever you're at. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a great night.